All right, well, good morning, church family, and I'm glad that you have found us this morning. It was a little different setup uh, that you saw, having to go online and click on our YouTube or Facebook or, or through our church website, but I thank you that you found us, and we will have church this morning. As you can see, my church shirt, the church has left the building. That does not mean that we have to have church in a localized place. That means that the First Baptist Church building is not the church but that you are the church. Each one of you guys in your living rooms, in your homes, is the church. And so we're gonna gather together this morning. We're gonna have a great time of worship and we're gonna just love the Lord. And I just wanna throw this out there for anybody who is like me, battling allergies right now during this COVID-19 season, I feel for you and I am sorry uh, that as we cough, people look at us like we are contagious that everybody's gonna run away from us. but know that it could just be allergies. And so proceed with caution though. People still uh, have common sense. Please wash your hands still. Uh, That'll be a great way to do it. Just uh, just think through that way and we will uh, get on each one of our days. I do have a few announcements for us before we get started this morning with our worship service. I just want to remind if you are a Sunday school teacher or a ministry leader, just to uh, continue to pour into your class, pour into those who you are already ministering to. And even though we may not have an organized Sunday school, please just be in contact with them. And if you see of any needs that are out there, if you're a Sunday school teacher, ministry leader, or just in general that you have a need that you need met, please still contact the church. We will be, as of right now, still having normal business hours. And so please contact us, and we will do the best that we can to meet any needs that you may have. And you can also still give uh, to the church. You can go online to our church website and click the Give button. Um, or you can mail in a check or uh, bring it up to the church office. We accept many forms of giving. We also accept credit cards. We may not give them back, but we do accept them. So we are uh, willing for all that. And our last announcement is that we will be providing food boxes uh, for students in Tipton County uh, this week. Uh, Parents and families of students in Tipton County can go to different localized uh, drop-off locations and gather food. Uh, that other churches and other organizations have brought. And so our church is wanting to partner with that. And so if you want to provide any food or anything like that or services help out, please let us know. We need the food by Monday and we will be uh, giving some boxes away on Thursday and on Tuesday and Thursday of later this week. So I encourage you guys to help out in that as we can see many needs in our community and we're just trying to meet some of them. Now as we transition into a time of worship, we just still want to encourage you to worship God freely. I know it will be a different setting. It'll be a little different maybe just with you and your kids or just a few friends around. Uh, It may not be the same atmosphere you may think of as a Sunday morning service, but still encourage you to worship. As I mentioned about the shirt earlier, the church has left the building. You do not have to be in a certain place to worship God. You can worship Him wherever you are, whether you're at home with three or four people or in a big room with a couple hundred people still worship him freely as Tyler and the praise team lead us in worship. Still encourage you to sing out songs as Cliff and Brother Chuck still bring the message. I encourage you to still listen and to hear from that as, as our the next few weeks as we are keep going with this. I encourage you to still worship God freely. To not just sit on the couch and just watch TV or watch your computer screen or your phone screen but to still worship God freely. Let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you for this morning, just an opportunity we have to gather together in groups of just a few, but that we can still worship you freely, God. So I pray that you would still use this time as we are live streaming and and having to do videos instead of gathering all together, that you would still do a work in people's lives, God, that people still be open to hear your message, Lord. And I pray that the Holy Spirit would come out and still move in great ways. It's in your son's name I pray. Psalm 34 says, I will praise the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will boast in the Lord. The humble will hear and be glad. Proclaim Yahweh's greatness with me. Let us exalt his name together. Let's sing together the splendor of the King. The splendor of the King. Rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. It trembles at his voice, it trembles at his voice. How great. 
Well, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us with, uh, with our broadcast this morning. Uh, our entire staff, both Pastor Chuck, myself, Matt, Tyler, and Sarah, uh, we uh, are thrilled to be with you this morning. Obviously, these are unprecedented days. Uh, I know right. that's been said millions of times. We're doing our, our very best to, to serve you uh, via our online pr platform. Um, so we're going to have uh, a, a Bible study this morning. I hope that you've enjoyed the worship already. But before we dive in, Pastor, I think we need to be open and honest with them. Yeah. We're kind of excited about this. We both have dreamed about being televangelists, and we finally get to realize our dreams. And if yeah. there's anything we've learned by watching telev televangelists, it's the first thing you do is you... Offer something. Offer something for sale. And so what we have to offer this morning are these prayer cloths. Now, not only will they sanitize your skin, but they uh, have been prayed over. They'll sanitize your heart. Right. And uh, you can get one of these prayer cloths for $200, okay? And so this is the very first thing we want to offer to you. And we have here uh, some special anointing oil. Some people call it Germex, mm -hmm. but we know what it really is. Mm -hmm. It's anointing oil. It will sanitize your skin and your soul. $200 per squirt. Come and get it. Make sure you comment in the section below because it's, uh, look, this is all we have. First come, first serve. Now, last but not least. We know that some of you have been hoarding this, okay? We, we've seen pictures. You don't need 30 rolls, right. okay? But if you have 30 rolls, listen, the Bible is very clear. We still expect you to tithe in these hard tithing, days. So tithing. if you bought 30, how many are we expecting back? 
free. 10%. The math's not hard. The doors will be open 8, 8 a.m. Monday morning. All right. I'm glad we got that announcement in. All right, now we can finally get to, uh, to the Word. Thank you so much. We know that uh, there's not a lot of laughter right now. There's, there's a lot of chaos, a lot of confusion, uh, probably a lot of fear, anger. Uh, emotions are across the board, but we're here this morning to hopefully bring some, some peace, some comfort through, uh, that we can find through God's Word. And, and so both Pastor and I, we have uh, two different passages that we're going to read out of. These are going to be considered a, a mini-sermon, if you will. Uh, and my first passage, Pastor, is out of Psalm 23, right. and it's one of my favorite uh, psalms. And uh, I'm just going to read the first four verses. It, it goes like this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And, and Pastor, the very first thing mm. that I pull out of that is, you know, Jesus Christ is the good shepherd. We know that. And, and if he's the shepherd, then we as his followers are the sheep. Mm -hmm. and, um, and as we go down, we, we, we see, number one, the sheep will not be in want. Mm -hmm. Every shepherd wants to take care of his flock. And, and God is doing that even during these dark days. Absolutely. Uh, and then I also see that he will make us lie down in green pastures, and then he leads us beside quiet waters. And there's something I pull out from there, Pastor, is the sheep may not necessarily know where the quiet waters are. Right. But the shepherd does. And, he does. And so it's our role as the sheep to keep our eyes on the good shepherd during these days. Nobody knows mm, no. what the next day holds, what the next week holds. But we know who holds the day and who holds the week. Amen. And that is the good shepherd. So keep your eyes on the shepherd. And then the, the last thing I want to look at, as, as he says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Um, you know, I ride my bike and I run, and uh, Pastor, riding a bike is a lot more dangerous than running, I, especially when I'm going down some of these backcountry roads. Uh, dogs are notorious. Mm -hmm. You know, people just let their dogs roam, and, uh, and there's been a lot of times dogs have come up to me. I've, I've been bit a couple times, <laughs> but, you know, sometimes the, I won't know that a dog is there, especially when I have my headphones in until I see its shadow. The shadow, yeah. And here's one thing, after years of riding that has never happened, the shadow of a dog has never bit me. <laughs> never. Never has a shadow hurt me. The shadow of a gun has never shot anybody. But the, the gun itself, the dog itself, those are where the dangers come. And the Word tells us that we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. For us as believers and followers of Jesus Christ, we have nothing to fear mm -hmm. because we're simply walking through the shadow. Mm -hmm. and, and so as dark as these days are, the Christians, the followers of Jesus Christ, we're walking through the shadow and will never be touched by death. Right. And so I, th that's, that's something that I really pulled out of Psalm 23, and I know that you have a passage that's near and dear to your heart as well. Right, and it has to do with people going through tragedy. Uh, we see that God can take tragedy, and He can use it for good. We don't look for tragedy but we do when it comes, we look to see what God is doing. And in 2 Samuel, the 24th chapter, there's a little known story that is never really talked about, but it's the story of King David and how that he disobeyed the Lord. And have you ever had a good idea, at least you thought it was a good idea, and found out later it wasn't such a good idea? Absolutely. You ignored the wisdom and you ignored uh, the Holy Spirit speaking to you. I've, man, I've had that happen plenty of times. Well. Even a man like David, as great as he was, he was still a man who could sin. This is one time that he sinned against the Lord, and the Bible says that he decided to take a census. The Lord told him no. His trusted advisor said no, but he went ahead anyway. And because of that, a tragedy occurred. A plague came upon the land. And as the plague came upon the land, David said this. He said, Lord, the people are being afflicted. Don't punish me, uh, don't punish them for what I've done. Look what it says here, 2 Samuel 24, verse uh, 17. It says this, I am the one who has done wrong, but these sheep, you know, you talked about sheep. What have they done? Please let your hand be against me and not them. Mm. So David took action. He got before the Lord. He got honest with the Lord, and here's what happened. He goes to a spot, and he offers up, a sacrifice. He builds an altar and he offers a sacrifice and here's what happens. He built the altar and there the Bible says the last verse 
of 2 Samuel says this. The last verse of 2 Samuel now says, Then the Lord was receptive to the prayer for the land, and the plague ended. You see, God is all about restoring. He's all about receiving. He's all about mercy. He's all about bringing us to a place where He can bring blessings upon us. And later on in the book of 2 Chronicles, there's a promise that is given to Solomon as Solomon is dedicating the temple. And here's what that promise is. Uh, it's 2 Chronicles 7.14. It says this, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways, I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. So there is a humbling there's a hearing, there's a humbling, there's a turning, there's a praying, there's a repenting, and then there's a receiving. Folks, we've got a great opportunity here now to really see God do a great and amazing work in our lives, in our church, in our community. As we turn and we say, Lord, we want to listen to what you're saying. That's right. Things are quiet now. Things are quiet physically. But spiritually, there's a lot going on. Let's really take advantage of this time and open our heart's door and see and say, God, what is it that you want to do in my life? What is it you want to do in my family's life? What is it that you want to do and bring a change in my heart? I'm ready. I'm open to hearing what you have to say. Now, let's just go back for a moment. This was the prayer at the dedication, the prayer of the dedication of the temple. You know what's interesting about these two stories? Solomon is dedicating the temple. The Lord speaks to Solomon there. What's interesting about these two stories is this. The place where David offered, the place where David offered up the sacrifice, that's the place that Solomon chose to build the temple. Isn't that amazing? Same place, prayer, dedication, God moving. Also, one other thing, just by way of history, it's the same place where Abraham offered mm -hmm. Isaac on the altar. So God has a special place. He has a special time where He'll do a special work. Let's be in on what God is doing during this time. Well, we definitely know that we are living in unique times. Uh, unique times. Uh, and we believe that God is working uh, even in these days. Uh, we'd like to give some practical yeah. things that we could do during these times. We, we Don't waste it. Yeah, yeah, we don't want to waste these days. And so the very first practical tip we want to give you is to, when, if you find yourself stuck at home, uh, whether it's by yourself or with your kids, uh, and you're out of your normal routine, uh, it's easy just to kind of wake up when you wake up, get yeah. a cup of coffee and ease into the day. But uh, one piece of advice that we would give you is to wake up, uh, shower, get dressed as if you are going to work mm -hmm. or you're going somewhere, and, and start your day with yeah. the purpose, you know, because if you just wake up and you stay in flannel pants all the time, you know, it might be comfortable, but about the third day into this quarantine, yeah. flannel can quickly feel like failure. Oh, it sure can. <laughs> so uh, we want to encourage you to get up, uh, have a purpose, have a plan for your day, and make the most out of these days because... Yeah. You, they'll quickly go by and you'll realize, I wasted, wasted. all of this time. And so uh, that's tip number one. Number two. I tell you what, let me jump in with a okay. quick story. Uh, uh, this was about 20 years ago. There was a lady in the church where I was pastoring. She had been in the corporate world. And in fact, she was kind of high up in the corporate world. But she had decided to go into business for herself. And uh, she went to someone who was kind of her mentor. And she said, I'm working at home and it's not working. <laughs> it's not going good. And he told her, he said, this is what you need to do. You need to get up in the morning. And he said, he said, when you went to work, how did you dress when you went to work? She said, well, I always put on my business outfit, uh, working the, in the upper part of the corporate world. And I always got ready and I'd go to work, try and look my best. He said, do that from home. Mm. So she said she would get up in the morning, get dressed, put on the makeup, fix her hair, and she would walk six feet from her bedroom to her office, yeah. sit out. She carried her purse with her, carried her purse with her, walked into the office, set it down, went to work, and okay. then she became much more productive. Okay. It, there's something to it, Cliff. There's absolutely something to it. So uh, leading into that leads us into our second point, live on purpose, yes. right? Even though we're quarantined, live life on purpose. Don't waste the day streaming Netflix and, yeah. and, and binging on that. Um, don't allow the kids to play video games or be on uh, the screens all the time. 
Uh, and then one of the greatest pieces of advice that I would give, whether we're quarantined or not, turn off the news. Oh, yeah. Turn it off, right? If you're watching Fox News in the morning, I promise you, eight hours later, they're basically going to be saying the same thing. And so just don't watch it all day, maybe 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at night, but limit your, your news intake because it's just a lot of bad stuff and it's just draining to us, okay? Uh, and then last thing is uh, set, set goals for the day. Yep. You know, uh, maybe, uh, you know, say... 30 minutes, I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to go do this. And, and so maybe if you're going to watch TV for an hour or 30 minutes, say, well, for every 30 minutes I, I watch TV, I'm going to read the Word for 30 minutes. Yes, yeah, exactly. Or for every 30 minutes I take parents, every 30 minutes that you take for yourself watching TV, take 30 minutes to go play with your child. Mm -hmm. You know, and I know we've had a lot of rain and the sun hasn't been out in a long time. Um, but when the sun's out, get out. Right. Get outside and enjoy nature. You need that fresh air. Don't stay inside. And then the last thing that I have, Pastor, when it comes to practical tips is make memories. Mm -hmm. We're all going to remember this. So we absolutely will. We will not forget these days quickly. And so however you manage your life, however you live it for the next several weeks, months, whatever it may be, you will remember how you spent your days and your children will remember how you spent your days. They'll remember the attitude of how you spent your days. Absolutely. And so it's very important, uh, parents, that we lead our children well during this time. Um, last point that I have, Pastor, for all of this is um, I just have the question could God be stripping away our idols during this time? Well, there's no doubt about the fact that we all have our idols that are very important to us. And many of them we're finding out either are more important than we realize to mm -hmm. us or we realize we really didn't need them as much as we thought. Yeah. I have three idols that, that I listed here in my notes, the idleness of busyness. Yes. We uh, Is anybody else yeah. struggling because you don't have places to go or people to see. Yeah. I, uh, I saw, because uh, I was scrolling through social media, probably my favorite meme was, please check on your friends who are extroverts because they're not doing okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, is it, anybody else look out the window and you see a neighbor and you just want to go out, hey, how you going? You know, like yeah. I, I just, I'm, I'm really struggling as I think all extroverts are. And so uh, the, the idol of busyness, the idol of careers that might yeah. be stripped away, and then the idol of sports. Mm -hmm. We can't watch it. We can't take our kids to it. I mean, uh, it could be that God is stripping away these idols because he knew that we wouldn't do it ourselves. Right. We can use this as an opportunity to grow deeper spiritually and hopefully minister Christ in a greater way. Uh, there's one uh, church member made the comment this past week. They said, I've read the Bible more. Yeah. in this past week yep. than I have in any other time right. in my life. How great is that? It's also a great opportunity to be a witness. You may say, well, we're not supposed to be seeing anybody or talking to anybody. Well, we are going to be either through social media or through the telephone. We can be a witness to the Lord, for the Lord. And what you can do is this. You can say, you know, God is really speaking to a lot of people through these times. And you can be a, give a word of witness somehow like yesterday. I just had an opportunity to talk to a couple of people in the grocery store and uh, just uh, said to them a few things of encouragement, and they were agreeing with me. If they didn't know me. I didn't know them, but I just said, you know, people are really thinking and talking more about the Lord these days, aren't they? And uh, then that opened a conversation to just give a word of witness. You can give a word of witness to people through uh, maybe a phone call. Maybe your neighbor, you could say something to them like this. Hey, we're going to be watching... First Baptist Church, um, as they stream their service on Sunday morning, uh, join me, uh, join our family with it. Let's talk about it afterwards. They'd be at their home. You could be at your home, and y'all can talk together lately. Right. Maybe there are people who don't go to church. Maybe they don't believe in the Lord. I can guarantee you one thing. People are thinking differently now, and maybe their hearts are going to be open more towards what God would say to them. I think if we had to give uh, this whole situation a, a, a passage, I would say James 4, chapter, uh, chapter 4, verse 8, Good. when it says, uh, come near to God and he will come near to you. And then the back end of that verse says, wash, you, wash your hands, <laughs> you sinners, yeah. and purify your hearts, you double-minded. And, and so um, I think it would be great for us to close this out with a prayer from sure. you, Pastor, as, uh, as uh, Second Chronicles tells us to do. And uh, listen, 
Uh, the offices are going to be open, uh, normal business. We have a small staff, so we're still able to do that. We're taking precautions. Um, and so if, if you need anything, please don't hesitate to contact us, and uh, we'd love to serve you the best that we can. Okay, again, thank you so much for joining our broadcast. As soon as Pastor prays, we're going to close our broadcast with a pre-recorded song from our choir of Waymaker this past week. Uh, it's going to be great. It's, oh, it's, it's going to be great. Okay. All right. Heavenly Father, our hearts are right now somewhat unsettled and I'd like to say Lord that my heart is just at total peace but that wouldn't be at the truth at all but Lord you are the one who gives peace and comfort and so Father I pray that you would bring your peace and comfort upon everybody's heart starting with mine I humble myself before you I ask you to bring the presence of the Holy Spirit on those that are watching and listening right now how I pray that you would just come into the homes and you would just be doing a work that has not been done before. Do a new work. Do a fresh work. Do a great work. How we ask for anyone that's watching this program that if they have gotten away from you that this would be the beginning, as Cliff said, of in the scripture of turning back to you and coming back to you. Lord, that this would be a time of humbling ourselves, a time of hearing what you have to say in a time of calling out to you and receiving whatever direction you have for our life. Be the one that is leading us by the still waters. Would we not try and do it on our own, but would we be dependent upon you in all of these things? For it's in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray.